Hello and welcome. I'm Bio. And today I'm doing another discussion, rant, moan, whatever you want to call it, these types of videos. Right? I don't really care what what what, what people call them. But today our topic is an interesting one, a topic that I hold very close to my heart. And today's topic is Pokemon. And this is coming from a fan of Pokemon. I've been a fan of Pokemon for a long time. So this is a fan's dissatisfaction with Pokemon. So I'm going to basically be going through a few different things that I feel like need to be said about Pokemon as a whole. Stuff that I've had feelings about for, or thoughts about, for a very long time. Very, very long time. And I just really kind of want to get it off my chest, to be completely honest with you. So that's what I'm planning to do with this, uh, with this video. Get it off my chest. Because, I'm going to be honest with you, these types of videos are more therapeutic for me than anything else. Right? They, you know, once I've, like, went, you know, with the last video where I talked about, um, like, One Punch Man Season 2, it was nice to get that off my chest. I now feel better now that I've gotten off that off my chest. Because there's only so many times you can, uh, you can shout at a brick wall and get no response. So it's nice to see some responses from people, how they feel about it. But don't worry if you're wondering about any more anime-based videos. I'm going to try and keep them to a minimum because I know that's what not that's generally what people don't. Yeah, let me try and word this correctly. It's not why people come here. People come here f to see me talk about games. That's what we're doing in this video. They don't see me, come here to see me talk about anime. So very first, let's go into the first topic when it comes to Pokemon, and that's my history with Pokemon, because I think that's the best place to start, right? If anyone's watching this video uh, who immediately saw the title and was like, I'm going to rage because Pokemon is my jam, Pokemon is my blood, I would like to address them directly and go, okay, well, here's my history with Pokemon, and here's the reasons why I have these thoughts and opinions. So I'm going to start with that. My history of Pokemon is, it's the very first video game I ever played. The very first video game system I had when I was younger, which I got when I was like seven, was a Game Boy Color. And the, literally I had three games. Three games with my Game Boy Color. I had Pokemon Blue, or Red, I can't remember exactly which one it was. It was either Red or Blue. I want to reiterate, I had both. I had actually three copies of Blue when I was a kid, and two copies of Red. So trying to pinpoint exactly which one was first is very difficult for me, because they are very similar games. But it was either Pokemon Red or Blue, along with Bart Simpson's Escape from Camp Deadly. What a terrible game that is. Um, and Batman for the Game Boy. And Batman was good. And later got R-Type as well, as well as, um, what, uh, there was another game I got on the Game Boy. Uh, it was Scooby-Doo Classic Creep Capers. So you might notice that out of those games, pretty much all of them were Game Boy, original Game Boy games, with one of them, that being the Scooby-Doo game, being a Game Boy Color game. But the point I'm trying to make is Pokemon was my very, very first video game. And it was the one I played the most of on my Game Boy Color. After that, it would be... There's a reason I had three copies of Pokemon Blue. I beat Pokemon Blue, and then I'd want to play through the game again, but didn't want to delete my save file, so I'd get another copy of Pokemon Blue. <laughs> my mom would say to me, Oh, what game do you want? What game do I'll get you? Uh, no, I just want another copy of Pokemon Blue. <laughs> That's what I want. Like, I didn't really play much of our type. Didn't really play much. Again, I, Bart Simpson's Escape from Camp Deadly is a terrible game. Um, I did play a, quite a bit of Batman the the game, but I never beat it. I only beat Batman uh, the game uh, the game on Game Boy original Game Boy about a couple of years ago. Um, and holy hell, I must have, I don't know why I struggled so much with the game, as I literally beat it with, like, dying just a couple of times, a handful of times. So, didn't even get to a point where I knew there was a flying segment in the game. <laughs> like a shoot 'em up kind of a segment, like our type So my very first game was Pokemon Blue. I don't know, I, I, you notice I go off on tangents a lot in this video. But after that, do you know what my next games were? on 
the Game Boy? Gold and silver. Actually, it was technically yellow. Then it was yellow. Then it was gold and silver. By the way, I had no other Game Boy Color games besides the Scooby-Doo one. Every other Game Boy Color game I had was a Pokemon game. So, gold, silver, crystal. Unfortunately, I had a weird, weird glitched copy of crystal or something. I don't know, but it just kept, like... I don't know, what's it? It kept, um, like, soft-locking me. Like, I would be get, I'd get up to, I think, like, the second gym, and then suddenly out of nowhere, it would just not work, and then I'd boot the game back up, and my save file was deleted. So I was like, oh, okay, I've got a weird copy of Procon Crystal. So I, I think I ended up getting rid of that. But then when I move on to, moved on to the Game Boy Advance, guess what? Pokemon, Pokemon Ruby Sapphire, Pokemon Emerald. I've played every single mainline Pokemon game. That's what I'm trying to get at. Every single one from Pokemon Red and Blue all the way up to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. I've played every single mainline Pokemon game. Every single one. Even the ones like Platinum, Emerald, Black, Black and White Version 2. Ultra Sun. Oh, Ultra Sun it was. My version was Ultra Sun. So I played Pokemon Moon, then Pokemon Ultra Sun. So I've had a lot of history with the mainline Pokemon games, but that's not all, you know. I had Pokemon Snap on the N64, Pokemon Stadium, Pokemon Stadium 2. When I got my GameCube, I got Pokemon Colosseum, Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. Mwah. Beautiful games, excellent games, very difficult, but excellent games. Why can't we have more games like that? You know, I had Pokemon Battle Revolution on the Wii, didn't really think much of that, but... I had Pokemon Channel on the GameCube. I'm just looking back, I, I'm not following a script here, right? I'm just plucking from my memory games I had. Pokemon was my childhood. It was my life. And I still very much love Pokemon. So I want you to know, going into this discussion, that I've got a lot of history of Pokemon. I still love Pokemon. I just really would like to see some changes. And that's what I'm going to be going into. What other things outside of the video games? The anime. I watched all of the in I watched all of the original Pokemon anime, all the way from Indigo League to Master Quest. I stopped there because, or else I, I'd be just going on, 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 and on. I ended up watching the 2019 Pokemon series, the new one, with Satoshi and Go. I think it was. Um, obviously, I watched it in Japanese. Really enjoyed that. That was really nice. I'm glad it ended. I'm glad it. I'm glad Ash's journey came to an end. It was really nice, really touching. After all these years. Personally, I think his journey should have ended ages ago, but that's just my opinion. So, not only do I have experience with the games, I have experience with the anime. I've also read a little bit of the Pokemon manga. I read Hey You Pikachu, and is it, is it the, no, Pikachu the Electro Mouse or something? Um, I've read a little bit of Pokemon, I've read a little bit of Pokemon Adventures. I've read both the red and blue as well as gold and silver parts of Pokemon Adventures. I like Pokemon Adventures. It's a good manga series. Um, I'm hoping at some point I'll go back to it and read the Emerald Sapphire parts. Eventually get get around to doing it. You know, it's it's on the list. Yeah, it's on the list for me to, to read. So you could say I can't really get enough of Pokemon. And I'd like more Pokemon. Wouldn't we all, right? And now we're going to segment on to point number two. I'd like to, I'd like to, you to see that I've got a lot of history with Pokemon. I love Pokemon, right? But point number two is the main problem. And that is a question not only just for you, but it's a question for me. What is the main problem with Pokemon? Again, look at the title of the video. Disfat dissatisfaction. Because that's how I feel when it comes to the Pokemon series at the moment. Because I find the main problem with the Pokemon series is they're so stuck in the past and they just don't know how to move forward. And you could argue and say, oh, but they've made a lot of innovation in the recent years with Pokemon. No, they haven't. They have not. They've copied other games. That's not innovation. Copying other games is not innovation. Pokemon's finally gone open world. Yeah, sure. Pokemon should have gone open world back on the PlayStation 3 and 360. Back on the Nintendo Wii. That's when Pokemon should have gone open world, like everyone else. This is what I'm saying. 
This is why I'm saying Pokemon is so behind in the times. And that is what I believe is the main problem with the Pokemon series. It's so behind in the times. It just can't keep up with everything else. But people accept that. And that's the key problem. Why do you accept it? Why? Why don't you critique Pokemon more? Why do people just forgive Pokemon so much? Because it's your childhood. It's my childhood. Yet I critique the fuck out of it. Why don't you? Why do you just seem to keep on these rose-tinted glasses and look at it in a light that puts it on this pedestal really, really high, sky high? I really just don't get it. But that's what I believe is the main problem with Pokemon. It's behind in the times. We're only just now going into open world Pokemon. Because let's be honest, Sword and Shield wasn't open world. So we're only just now going into open world Pokemon. You could say that Pokemon Legends Arceus was the first outing into kind of the open world kind of face, um, base. And hell, I liked Pokemon Legends Arceus. They actually tried something different with that game. A little bit more of their own unique innovation in that game. Just to then go to Scarlet and Violet and then Scarlet and Violet be just the same formula again. And I'm like, oh my god. I thought you might have learned something from Legends Arceus. Here's hoping the next Legends game is at least somewhat interesting. If it's all going to be based within one city, right? I'm expecting a hell of a lot of detail. And I'll get into the reason why I use that, that sentence very specifically. So, that is my main problem with Pokemon. I personally think Pokemon is stuck in the past. I think it's so stuck in the past, and it's not willing to move on, move forward. And there's a lot of reasons, and a lot of things that can be changed. But, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Because there's specific points in the video where we'll get to that. So, I'm going to now move on to my thoughts of the most recent Pokemon games. So... I actually got them out of order here. I probably should have them in order of them getting released, really. So I'm just going to move one of these points around quickly as I'm recording this. Because I think it fits better. So let's first talk about Sword and Shield. And my experience with Sword and Shield. And I'd love for you to tell me your experience with Sword and Shield as well. Sword and Shield was bad. Let's be honest. It was bad, right? They try something different, I'll give them credit for that, but then they completely messed it up with the presentation, with what they were trying to do. Having these like open areas, these big zones where you can capture Pokemon was a cool idea, but the biggest problem with Sword and Shield was the execution, let's be honest. The execution was very, very poor. Sword and Shield felt like the kind of game I would have expected to see on the Nintendo Wii, not on the Nintendo Switch. But at least they were trying. I played through, I had a copy of Pokemon Sword, and I played through till the end. I didn't, I, if there was any post-game content, I don't generally do post-game content in Pokemon games, because once I beat the Elite Four, I call that done. Last time I did like post-game content was like, Probably Ultra Sun was the last time I did post-game content, and I didn't like the post-game content in Ultra Sun, so I just like, from that point forward, I was like, yeah, once I beat the Elite Four, if I feel like I've had enough, that's enough. So, so yeah, we're sort of sure to beat the Elite Four, and that was enough for me. But, you know, some of the, some of the gyms, you know, in the big stadiums, it was okay. But like I said, it's... It's hard for me to talk about my full thoughts on Sword and Shield because it's a long time. It's a long time since I've played Sword and Shield. I personally... Well, well, Sword, specifically. I didn't play Shield. Sword tried to expand Pokemon a bit more than what we had in the Sun and Moon series, right? And I'm happy they tried to do that. But again, it comes to down to the fact of too little, too late. And it didn't help the fact that the execution was poor. Everyone's always going to talk about the graphics. I'm going to bring it up now because I think it's going to be a topic that people are going to, always going to fall back on with Pokemon games. The graphics in all Pokemon games, right, 
from Switch or that are on the Switch is fucking atrocious. They're horrible. It is horrendous, right? I'm not going to be one of these people that are going to defend the graphics in Pokemon games, but I'm also going to be one of these people that are going to say they're working on the Switch. The Switch is a shit system when it comes to graphics. It is fucking terrible, right? Oh, wait, it's not. Oh, wait, 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 wait. It's not. I. Oh, wait, wait. It's not. Because look at fucking Zelda. Look at Breath of the Wild. Look at Tears of the Kingdom. And look at a few other different, like, even indie games that are on the Switch. They seem to make it work. They seem to go with a specific style that makes it work. Don't they? It's funny how Game Freak can't seem to do that. It's funny how the Pokemon Company can't seem to do that. Why instead must they have the game look fucking ugly? Why is it that the best looking thing, best looking aspect of the game is always the Pokemon. Never the world. The world, fucking, that'd be looking PS2 ass. <laughs> that'd be PS2 looking ass. <laughs> and obviously everyone makes that joke. But I'm gonna be, I am one of those people. I will, I, graphics does not stop me from playing the Pokemon game. You have to, I wanna I want put that out there straight away. Even if the graphics are bad, it doesn't stop me from playing the Pokemon games. But it doesn't mean I'm going to just forgive the fact that they've got poor, pathetic graphics. It's going to be still me critiquing them and saying, what the hell are these stank ass graphics? I expect better from a multi-billion dollar company, personally. I expect fucking better. I'm pretty sure it's a multi-billion dollar company. Or at least multi-million. I expect better, really. I really do. And as a, you know, there's a lot of rumors that Sword and Shield were like originally supposed to be on the 3DS, but they got moved over to the Switch last minute. And if that's the case, I can give a little bit of leeway because it may not necessarily be Game Freak's fault, but still. The best looking Pokemon game on the Switch I've played thus far is Let's Go Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu. In this case, I played Let's Go Eevee because the style of it actually makes it look good. The graphics are very basic, very basic. I would say even more basic than what you would see in Sword and Shield, personally. But they go for a very specific style and it works. And because of that, it looks fantastic. The best looking Pokemon game that you can get from Game Freak on the Nintendo Switch is Pokemon Let's Go Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu. The best looking Pokemon game you can get on the Switch period is probably Pokemon Tournament DX because it's not Game Freak making it. <laughs> so that's my thoughts with uh, Sword and Shield. I can't really talk, talk on the story because I barely remember any of it. All I remember really is that the graphics were really poor. The world could was pretty awe-inspiring. It was it, or, not awe-inspiring, but uninspired. So yeah, let's move on to Pokemon Legends Arceus. I can talk about that a bit better. I like Legends Arceus, going back in time to a period that has never been really touched before in Pokemon. Really cool idea, really cool concept. Having it be based on a gen we've already experienced, really nice to revisit that gen. I like Pokemon Legends Arceus. It is probably the best Pokemon game we've had in recent years, to be honest with you. Just because it does things differently. It's a proper open world. Even the style style of it is better. Graphically speaking, it's better than Sword and Shield. I would even argue that graphically speaking, it's better than Scarlet and Violet, which is fucking insane to think that Scarlet and Violet came out after Legends Arceus, and yet Legends Arceus still looks better graphically. How the fuck does that work? But it is what it is. I like the idea of like having these like regional variants of these like mystical old school variants. And obviously they played back into that kind of factor in Scarlet and Violet. But generally speaking with, with Legends Arceus, I quite liked it. I quite liked it. Yeah, you know, the probably even still with me comp complimenting the graphics, the graphics is probably the, the, the lowest point of the game because they're still, they're still not what, not they're still don't, Wait, try to think of the way. They're still not as good as Let's Go Eevee. They're still not as good as Let's Go Eevee. Again, it's not all about the polygons. It's about the style you go with, with a game. Style over substance every day of the week.
and Let's Go Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu has a hell of a lot of style. Legends, Arceus, doesn't quite meet that merit. It really doesn't. But it's still better than Sword and Shield, and in my opinion, still better than Scarlet and Violet, in terms of gra uh, graphics, anyway. So, and like I said, I really like the whole idea of like throwing a Pokemon out and the Pokemon and the Pokemon battles are like happening in real time and you can influence the Pokemon, the battles as well yourself. You can't exactly fight the Pokemon, but yourself, but you can kind of go around and get to a more strategic position and, and, and throw things at the Pokemon. And it's, it's, it's an interesting idea and it, I think it was done quite well in Legends Arceus. So I enjoyed my time with it. I won't speak on the story, because again, I don't remember much of it. I never remember much when it comes to story of Pokemon games, unless it's like the real old school ones, so... And now, finally, we have Scarlet and Violet. I was disappointed with Scarlet and Violet. I liked the idea of having a Pokemon be a mode of transportation. That was cool. That was fine. Um... But I can't believe how unbelievably barren the open world is. It is so barren. And it is so fucking ugly. And you've got fucking people that are moving at like fucking one frame a second, right? No, no, maybe not one frame. Yeah, no, one frame a second. It is one frame a second. There are literally people moving in the background at one frame a second. And I'm like, wow, this is, this is bad. This is fucking bad. So, even though I enjoyed my time more in Scarlet and Violet than I did with Sword and Shield, when I play Pokemon Violet specifically, because again, purple is my favorite color, there was still a lot of aspects of it that I thought to myself, wow, you really, like, are you actually learning anything, Game Freak? Are you actually learning from your mistakes? Because it really feels like you're not. <laughs> it really feels like you're not. And I'm going to get into the, the reason why. Again, a bit later. It's one of the topics near the end of the video. But, like I said, there was aspects of Scarlet and Violet I did like. The open world was not one of them, if I'm honest with you. The, I would have rather had a smaller open world with a lot more to do than have this massive open world with fucking nothing to do. You know, I like the whole idea of like having multiple gyms, kind of. You had normal gyms they had to go and do, but you also had those base. Was it those bases you went to with the, with the? Um, I can't even remember the name of the. This is how bad it is. I can't even remember the name of the of the gang. It's not Team Rocket. It's not Team Plasma. It's not. Was it Team Star? Is that it? Isn't it Team Star? I swear it's Team Star. So Team Star. I think is what it is, or get the Star Gang, or whatever the fuck it is, right? They're pretty much acted in a way like gyms, but slightly differently. So, and I like that aspect. Just like in Sword and Shield, you had the kind of like, when you had to go and do specific conditions. It wouldn't just go in the gym, battle trainers. It was go into the gym, capture this specific Pokemon or something like that. I think they had something like that. Well, at least you could capture Pokemon in, in gyms at one point. So, you know, and the whole entire like, eight, like, future Pokemon and past Pokemon. That was a cool concept. I will admit the, um, when you actually get to the, what's it called? The, was it the area zero? Is it, is it area zero? When you get to area zero, um, holy moly, it's literally nothing there, just, but Pokemon isn't there. It's just, just a blank canvas just of terrain with Pokemon scattered around. And I was like, wow, is this it? Wow. That's fucking terrible. And this is, again, it's just, why does it look so bad? And it's off-putting because it, you, you, it's, you struggle to get into the world because of it, at least in my opinion. And obviously they lifted a lot of aspects from Breath of the Wild, the whole climbing thing and all that. And a lot of games are doing that, but you wouldn't expect, maybe expect Pokemon to do something a little bit different. I don't know. I don't know. So, Violet was okay. But that's all it was. It was okay. It wasn't anything special. If I had a, if I could give a ranking for the last three Pokemon games, I would give Sword and Sword and Shield a four out of ten. I'd give Legends Arceus a probably a seven out of ten. I quite enjoyed Legends Arceus to be honest, and I'd probably give Scarlet and Violet a five out of ten. 
average. But then, then we get into the problem. Because you might be noticing the footage I've been using for uh, for this video thus far. And that's the Pokemon spin-off games. How is it... Pokemon spin-off games end up being better than the main games in some respect? And I'll get into, get into a few different things. So, so, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. I like the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon series. I haven't played many of them. But... I played through the entirety of Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Blue Rescue Team on the DS, and I've had a little go, a little bit of a go on the uh, the most recent one on Switch, and I like it. It's a cool little thing. But the point, the reason why I wanted to bring up Pokemon Mystery Dungeon specifically, not only just mention that I like this series, it's okay. I haven't played that many of their games to be honest, but how is it? That the most recent Pokemon Mystery Dungeon game, right, made by... Well, who's, who's it made by? It's fucking Spike Chunsoft or something, isn't it? I can't remember. I'm going to have to look that up now. Because I don't even remember the name of the game either, which is going to just bother me. So, Pokemon Mystery. We'll go for the most recent one. Pokemon Super Mystery Dungeon. That's not the most recent one. Oh, it is Rescue Team DX. I didn't realize it was a remake. <laughs> okay, it was a remake. So the most recent one they did on Switch was a remake of the original Blue Rescue Team, funny enough. I, it didn't even feel like a remake to me, but okay. I guess it goes to show how long it was since I played um, Blue Rescue Team. But Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Rescue Team DX. It is developed by Spike Chunsoft. I did remember that correctly. It only has a 69 for Metacritic. But the one thing we can say about the game, because I, I, I thought it was okay for the little, for the very little bit I played of it, right, is the fucking graphics, the style, it looks beautiful. They go for this, like, storybook looking art style, and it's so nice, so nice. And I think to myself, why aren't you doing this, Game Freak? Why can't you have a Pokemon game be released and look like this? Oh my god, it would be beautiful. And once again, it's another style over substance in terms of graphics. They went for a certain style for the game, and it looks nice. It looks beautiful. And still within the limitations of the Nintendo Switch. And then we move on, you know. So that's all I wanted to mention about Mystery Dungeon, right? That's the point I wanted to make with Mystery Dungeon. Then we have Snap. Who remembers playing Pokemon Snap on the N64? I do. Did you know? Here we go. Did you know gaming? No, did you know? Pokemon Snap was the first 3D Pokemon game on home systems, home console systems. The very first one. I'm dead serious. If I type in any Pokemon game and we look at Pokemon as a, as a, as a whole, okay, maybe maybe it wasn't the first one. <laughs> okay, maybe it wasn't the first one. First one. I got that wrong. I'll, I'll put my hands up. I got it wrong. Technically speaking, the first Pokemon game in 3D was Pokemon. It was the Japanese exclusive Pokemon Stadium. Technically speaking, then it was Hey You Pikachu. And I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know anybody who played Hey You Pikachu. I don't know anybody who played Hey You Pikachu. But then there's also the fact that Hey You Pikachu actually came out in the West in the year 2000, where it came out in Japan in 1998, whereas Pokemon Snap came out in both Japan and the West in 1999. And that's the reason why I probably think to myself, Pokemon Snap was the first 3D Pokemon game to come on a home system, which technically it is for the West, specifically. Why is that a big deal? Well, because you were seeing Pokemon in 3D for the first time. Before that, your only experience with Pokemon being in 3 Pokemon was with the Game Boy games. Now, for the first time, you were seeing them in 3D. In 3D. So, a photography Pokemon game made sense, actually. It's actually a good idea. Because it showcases the, the 3D. 
and it showcases the Pokemon and showcases and it adds a lot of to like how the Pokemon act in environments and so on and so forth. So it's no surprise that Pokemon Snap was a really successful game back in the day, and it's no surprise it still holds a nice place in my heart, one of my favorite games on the N64. So how do they fuck it up with new Pokemon Snap? How did they screw up that game? And how is it that people were saying the game was good? They were saying it's good, and I was like thinking to myself, are you crazy? Are you out of your mind? What's wrong with you? People were saying New Pokemon Snap is a good game. They're waiting for it. I was waiting so long for this game. Now it's out and it's fantastic. I hated it. Do you know why? Do you know why Pokemon Snap is such a good game? It's because it was the first time you were seeing Pokemon in 3D. That was the main reason. With new Pokemon Snap, you'd already seen the Pokemon in 3D. So what do you what did you need to do? What did you need to do to make new Pokemon Snap make a splash, as you could say? Have it be the best looking Pokemon game to date. That's how you do it. You have it may be have it literally be the best looking Pokemon game to date. And what did it end up being? It ended up looking like dog shit. It ended up looking like absolute dog shit. Now, I don't know if I... I can't remember if I played any Pokemon Snap for the channel. But I did have... I had a copy of Pokemon Snap. I put about five hours into the game and then I stopped and I went and fucking took it back. I actually went and... I, got, I never buy Pokemon games brand new. I always buy them from CEX. Because... I always like to be able to go and take a game back after 14 days of purchase. And that's what I did. I bought the new Pokemon Snap, put five hours into it, and then took it straight back to CEX, got a full refund. Because I don't re I personally don't really want to support the Pokemon company anymore, so I always buy my Pokemon games second second hand nowadays. So But it looks so horrible. And do you know why it looks horrible? Because the environment looks bad. The Pokemon don't look like they belong in the environment at all. It's just presentation wise is horrific. And I'm like thinking to myself, people were not talking about this. When it came out, I remember having fucking, I was moaning like buggery to myself about how is no one talking about how this game looks so fucking ugly. It looks so fucking ugly. No one was talking about it. No one was talking about how with the original Pokemon Snap, look at how nice that was. Look at how nice that game was back then. It was nice because it it was graphically very good for the Nintendo Switch. And it was the first time you were seeing Pokemon in 3D. So the only way you could have a new Pokemon Snap game is have it be the best looking Pokemon game to date. And yet it still didn't look better than Poke Pokemon Tournament DX. How? Why didn't you just... Who made Pokemon Tournament DX? Let's have a look. Let's have a look, shall we? Either that or they could have gone with a style. They could have gone with a specific style. Keep in mind, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee was out before this. What about Pokemon... Oh, look! Bandai Namco Games were the developers of Pokemon Tournament DX. Well, how is it then that Pokemon Tournament DX still looks better? How is it? I'm looking at footage of Pokemon Tournament now on GameFAQs, right? I'll even put footage up on, um, because I did, I remember I did play this game on the video at some point in the video, right? I don't know where I'll put it, but I'll put it somewhere in the video of Pokemon Tournament DX. And you look at that game graphically, it looks really nice. The Pokemon actually look like they fit in the environment. Everything comes together really nicely for what is effectively a 3D Pokemon fighting game, right? And yet, they couldn't do that. They couldn't do the exact same thing for, again, same developers. It, obviously, some kind of internal Bandai Namco developer. Couldn't do the same with New Pokemon Snap. It's just, it's just blows my mind. And that was one of the reasons why I wanted to bring up Pokemon Tournament specifically. It's because it is the best looking Pokemon game. It is the best looking one graphically. And it's still on the Switch. So where's the excuse? Where's the excuse? I don't think there is an excuse, is there? You can't excuse the graphics anymore. How can you excuse the graphics 
saying it's a limitation of the system when you got games like Pokemon Tournament DX. When you got games like Pokemon Super Mystery Dungeon, uh, no, po no, po Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Rescue Team DX. What's the, where, 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 how can you excuse it? But yeah, ah, uh, it's just, it's nice to get this off my chest. It really is. So what other Pokemon spin-off games should I mention? Pokemon Channel, I guess. I played through Pokemon Channel. I enjoyed it. It's a different, it's a different kind of game. I don't think we'll ever get anything like Pokemon Channel anymore, to be honest. Had a little go on Pokemon Conquest. That was okay for what it was. Pokemon Stadium. Really nice. Pokemon Stadium. I still don't understand why they didn't continue the Pokemon Stadium series. It makes no sense to me. Like, it's easy money. Let's be honest. A Pokemon game that allows you to use any Pokemon in the game. Any Pokemon. In a, in a battle simulator settings. Like, it's, it's, it's brain-dead money. It is literally easy fucking money. And yet they stopped. They stopped after Pokemon Stadium 2. Why? Why didn't you make Pokemon Stadium 3 on the GameCube? Why didn't you make Pokemon Stadium 4 on the Wii? Pokemon Stadium 5 on the Wii U. We could be on Pokemon Stadium 6 right now, boys. Every new generation of Pokemon, you get a Pokemon Stadium game. Do it like that. So technically speaking, what are we on? Gen 8 now? Hmm. Fucking Pokemon Stadium 8 on the fucking... Nintendo Switch. Nintendo would easily sell money on that. You could link it to, like, your normal Pokemon game, just like they did back in the day with the stadium games. Link it with Pokemon Home, so you put your, you can have your Pokemon be on there, but you can also do rental Pokemon. And then finally, there's Pokemon Colosseum and XD Gale of Darkness. By far my favorite Pokemon games to ever come out. And they were not, they're not even make, made by Game Freak. That's what makes it beautiful. They're not even made by Game Freak. Genius Sonority Inc. is the developers of Colosseum and XD. And they are great. Colosseum is the best, in my opinion. XD is good. But you could see they, they were told to tone it down a little bit after Colosseum. You could see that. And it's a real shame that they had to do that. Colosseum and XD were great games on the GameCube. Fondly remembered by most people that played them. They're difficult, I will admit. They are difficult games because you don't have wild Pokemon except for, I guess, in XD or you have Poke Spots. The only way you can get new Pokemon is for Shadow Pokemon. It's called innovation and it makes it interesting. It spices things up. So to see Gen Genius Sonority Inc. have to go from those two great games to making Battle Revolution is a fucking crying shame. Who asked for Battle Revolution? Battle Revolution was, let's let's try to make Pokemon Stadium 3, but make it fucking terrible so that you can't have the rent. There's no such thing as rental Pokemon. You can't have that. You have to pay with play with specific Pokemon and have the game just overall be fucking terrible. Great. Fantastic. And guess what Genius Sonority Inc. did after that? Basically nothing. Basically nothing. You have a look at Genius Sonority Inc., right? After... If I go on to Pokemon Coliseum, go on Genius Sonority Inc., you have a look at the games they make after Battle Revolution. It's a fucking crying shame. They basically make nothing. They also made Pokemon Troze on the DS. I bet you didn't know that. They made Dragon Quest Swords and the Masked Queen and the Tower of Mirrors. But do you know what they... After that, after basically 2007... Shit. How, how about 100 classic books on the DS? What about Disney Fairies Tinkerbell? Oh, they did learn with Pokemon Typing Adventure. What about Den the Denpa Men? Who even knows what that is? Oh, no, but they did Pokemon Battle Troze. Or did, they did Pokemon Shuffle. And more recently, they did Pokemon Cafe Mix. But that's nice, though, isn't it? That's nice. They've now been relegated to these fucking mobile games. Basically. Back in the day, they were making some of the best Pokemon games. And now they're relegated to mobile Pokemon games. Like, get in your place for making something good. Get in your place for making something innovative. Fuck you. We want to do the bare minimum. And we're getting to it. 
we're getting to it again key phrase bare, doing the bare minimum so i'm going to move on to the next topic now because i think i've talked about pokemon spin-off games enough and that's pokemon fan games now i actually have only played one pokemon fan game and that is pokemon apollo that is the only pokemon game i've played that's a, fa a pokemon fan game that i've played is pokemon apollo It's the best Pokemon game I've played in probably the last 10 years. Yeah, I said it. I said it. It's the last Pokemon game. It's the Pokemon game. Try and get the right words out. It's the best Pokemon game I've played in the last 10 years. And it's a fan game. Pokemon Apollo is a great game. It's a great game. And I hope that I get the get time among play me playing loads of other games, right? To put some time into some other Pokemon fan games. Hell, if you've played some Pokemon fan games and you know which ones to recommend, which are really good, put it down in the script. Uh, put it down in the comment section. I'd love to know. Recommend me some Pokemon fan games. But I loved Pokemon Apollo. The story was interesting. The fact that it was a bit more mature was really good as well. Like, I still don't understand how they haven't made a... I'm not talking about making an 18-plus Pokemon game here, Nintendo. I'm talking about making a 12-plus Pokemon game or something, right? <laughs> For the, a bit more of the mature audience, because a lot of your audience nowadays is full of a lot of mature gamers, or adults, as I should say. So, I would like to see a more mature Pokemon game. But Apollo, really, really good game. Really enjoyed it. If you wanted me to go into like specifics about it, it does, it, the leveling in the game is really good. They don't really require you to grind too much because the level of trainers and Pokemon, uh, the level of trainers generally kind of matches what you're going for. So the gyms are really good. The, the characters are really interesting. I quite enjoyed Pokemon Apollo, to be honest with you. And I'm hoping that I'll play another Pokemon fan game in the future. But it's funny to think that the fans seem to be doing Pokemon better than the Pokemon company. And that is something to think about, isn't it? How are they doing it better? How are fans, who are basically making Pokemon games based off of the Fire Red and Leaf Green engine, right? How are they doing it better than fucking the Pokemon company. Just food for thought, food for thought out there. The next topic I want to go into, because I realized looking at the time of the video, and I still, I'm only about half of my topics have been talked about. Pokemon clones, right? There's a bunch of Pokemon clones out there, isn't there, at the end of the day. There's more recently, more recently, Power World isn't there. And I want to talk about Power World, but not yet. I want to talk about some other Pokemon clones that you may not know about. You ever heard of Monster Crown? You ever heard of Coromon? Temtem, anyone? I haven't personally played Temtem, but I've heard good things. But I've played a bit of Monster Crown. And yeah, it takes inspiration from Pokemon. It's quite different. I'd say it, it takes inspiration from Shin Megami Tensei games and Pokemon, in my opinion. A little bit of both for the fact that you like, do contracts with them. But I only played a little bit of it because it wasn't really my jam. I couldn't get particularly invested in the world. And it's the same with Coromon. I couldn't really get too invested in Coromon, but I could see why people liked Coromon. <clears throat> but there is two Pokemon clones I have played all the way to the end. And that's Nexomon and Nexomon Extinction. I'm looking forward to Nexomon 3. Nexomon is by no means a particularly good game. It's a mobile game originally, and there's a lot of grind in the game, but I like to call it a perfect switch-off game. You switch off and you play the game. But one thing I do like about Nexomon is the side character, Atlas. He's quite co comedic, tends to break the fourth wall a little bit, but... I enjoy the direction and the story that Nexomon has. And it's the kind of story that I would expect Pokemon have done have done already, but no, they haven't. I'm not going to get into the story of 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 
Nexomon. But I can talk a little bit about Nexomon Extinction, because I very, very recently played it. Because Nexomon's a little while ago now. So with Nexomon Extinction, basically the main character from the last game uh, destroys uh, Om Omnicron, which is the big bad Pokemon, Nexomon, whatever you want to call it, right? Um, that is trying to destroy the world. What a surprise, you save the world, that kind of jazz. But it's interesting because all the Nexomon are children of Omicron. So, te Omicron. So, technically speaking, those Nexomon can basically break out of your control because you use these Nexo traps, which are basically Pokeballs. So, but they can break out of those and, f and turn on you because of Omicron. So, Omicron ended up being defeated in the first game. And then in the second game, we're coming to like an extinction kind of scenario because you then real because they then basically realize that oh shit, um, Nexomon are basically vital to the Earth's or the planet's survival, and because Omnicron is dead now, all the next there's Nexomon are slowly going to start dying and basically going extinct. Meaning that what's going to happen is humans are also going to go extinct, and it also doesn't help the fact that. There's these tyrants going around, causing destruction, killing people as well. So the human race is in in an in a interesting spot. So you've got to go and basically restore balance. And that's what you do. You restore balance in the world by becoming the new king of monsters, right? So it's an interesting story. And like I said, there's loads of Nexomon. And the Nexomon, you can see in a few occasions, they very clearly take inspiration from Pokemon, very clearly, with some of them, some of the designs. But there's some cool designs there, and it's it's nice. I just wish the grind wasn't so fucking horrible. But it is literally the perfect switch-off kind of game, because it is that kind of game. But the reason why I'm talking about this, about these Pokemon clones, it's because in some cases, they do it better than the original game, right? I can't speak on behalf of Monster Crown, I can't speak on behalf of Coromon, but with Nexomon... With Nexomon, the story is better. By far, it's more interesting. The world, maybe not so much, because it's quite a basic world, and... Yeah, okay. You're gonna always like Pokemon over Nexomon, obviously, in terms of, like, designs. But there's some really cool designs for some Nexomon in there. Really cool designs. And the battle system could be a little bit more refined. But for what is, effectively speaking, originally supposed to be like a mobile game, it's pretty decent. So you think to yourself... Now Nexomon's going into 3D with Nexomon 3. Nexomon 3 is going to be in 3D, so I'm going to be interested to see how that turns out. But how is it that Pokemon fan games, they get it better, they do it, do it right, and even spin-offs, at least they add innovation. At least they do things differently to, to, to some degree. Whereas Pokemon struggles with innovation so much. And now we'll move on to the final... Pokemon clone I'll talk about, Power World, right? We gotta talk about Power World, because everyone's talking about Power World. First things first, I wanna put it on the table. How similar are po similar... What? Well, okay, maybe the better way to put it is... What are the similarities between Pokemon and Power World? You capture monsters in a ball. And that's where it ends. I'm dead serious, that's where it ends. That is the most similar. Are some of the pal, pals, as they're called in the game, designs similar to Pokemon? Yes. But I could say the same thing with Nexomon, I could say the same thing with Monster Crown, I could say the same thing with Coromon, same thing with Temtem. They too have monsters in there that look similar to Pokemon. It looks very clear that you can tell, you can even tell what Pokemon they got inspired by. So what's wrong if Power World does the same? I'm just saying, what's wrong if Power World does the same? They're not copying Pokemon. Their designs are inspired by Pokemon. There's nothing wrong with being inspired by a game series. 
So then there's also the fact of the battling. Yes, you will send your pals out into battle to battle other pals as well as humans, but you fight the humans yourself. You have guns. Well, you don't have guns. And I'll get to the reason why I say you don't have guns in a minute. You know, you have weapons yourself that you can use against the pals, and you can kill the pals yourself. So, the battle system is very different from Pokemon in that respect. Very different. So, the, sim the similarities begin and end with capturing monsters and putting them into balls. Capturing, cool, capturing monsters in balls. That's where it begins and that's where it ends in similarities. Everything else is different. Everything else is different. And I put about eight hours into Power World and I couldn't put any more time into it because it just wasn't my type of game. I have done a video that's going to come out much later down the line on, on my second channel, Biolize, where I'll say that I like the game because I did. In the first three hours, I was enjoying myself, but then it got tedious and boring and yeah. And I have my own issues with Power World. But generally speaking, I can understand why people like Power World. But saying it's Pokemon with guns is really, really an exaggeration. Because it has more similarities with Ark than it does with Pokemon. Like, it takes a lot of stuff from Ark. But that same stuff was taken from Craftopia, Pocket Pair's previous game, which I put about 15 hours into. And that's probably the reason why I don't really enjoy Power World that much. It's because it's so similar to Craftopia that... I was like, I just felt like I was playing Craftopia again, but with pals. And that's probably the reason why I couldn't play any more than eight hours, which is a shame because I paid 25 pounds for it. I want to get at least 25 hours out of the game, but I'm not going to force myself to play the game if I don't like it anymore. I'm not finding it fun anymore. So all I ended, do, ended up getting was about eight hours out of the game. I wish I could refund it. I really wish I could, but it is what it is. But... Power World is a survival game at heart. Pokemon is not. And for me, a great survival game needs three things. Creative base building, ease of access, and freedom to explore. Power World has none of these things. The creative base building doesn't have that. The base building is very, very basic. You've got better base building in Rust. You've got better base building in the forest. You've got better ba base building in Minecraft than you have in Power World. Power World, its base building is very basic. It is literally, his, it's just squares. It's just a grid based build system. It's just squares. And there's, there's nothing beyond that. But then there's no real point to build a base because you only really need a place to, the, the only reason why you need to build a house in your base is for you to sleep somewhere. That's it. So it could be a one by one. It doesn't need to be anything else. <clears throat> then everything else can be outside. Storage containers can be outside. Every pretty much everything can be outside from that point. And yeah, okay, you got raids. You got to kind of defense defend stuff, but then you can put wooden wooden like walls, you know, big walls, 12 foot high walls, whatever you want to call them, out around around the perimeter of your base with a big gate on the front so there's ways to get around those things but generally speaking yeah it's it's not good the uh the the base building in in pal in pal world because i decided to build my base on a cliff bad decision that was Especially when the it, they very specifically want you to build a base on a flat surface. Like, it has to be a big flat surface. Or else everything's going to look weird. And you're just going to run out of room or it's just going to be cramped as fuck. Because some of the pals are big. They are big. Also, it takes ages to get to a point where you can have a second base. Don't like that fact as well. I should maybe be able to make as many bases as I want. That's just my stance. Then we have the ease of access. It uses blueprints. Level You level up and you unlock certain blueprints that you have to use technology points to unlock. It's the same system as an arc. An arc is engrams and this it's blueprints, whatever you want to call them. They could be engrams as well. And... 
I want to tell you straight away, your first gun is a musket. And do you know what it's locked behind? Level 30. Do you know what level I was after eight hours of play? 11. I was level 11. I hadn't even beat the first boss, boss, Mammoth Forest. Didn't even beat it. It's because I tried to capture it every time. I didn't want to beat it. I wanted to capture it. And I just kept failing, running out of pal, uh, pal spheres. And it just kept killing me again and again. And I was like, this is really annoying. This is really annoying. So it requires you to grind a lot in the game. Don't like that. So my e term of ease of access is, why don't you have classes? I'm a builder by heart. If I used to play Rust with my friends, right? Back before, uh, you know, Rust became boring for me. Because I got like 120 hours in Rust. I was a builder at heart. I was always the one building the bases because I came. I had the best base, base designs. And I was just a builder. I was a builder and a farmer. I wasn't a combat kind of guy, right? And there's plenty of survival games out there that support that. Power World does not support that. Because, again, you have very limited base building. It's not very creative at all. And what I mean by ease of access, yeah, wooden foundations are easy to get. They're like, what, level two, two, I think? Wooden foundation or level one? Stone is like mid-twenties. I didn't even get to stone foundations. I didn't, like... Pokemon with guns was such a big factor of a lot of people for Power World. And it's what caught me by, caught my attention as well. But the fact is you don't even get guns until like your first gun, which is a musket, which is terrible, till like level 30, unless you go to a merchant and buy a pistol for an outrageous sum of money, which you then lose because you get killed by something because of point number three, the freedom to explore. You shouldn't explore in Power World, shouldn't, because you'll die, you'll just fucking die. Most pals are generally docile, don't get me wrong, but go, don't go to Mount Obsidian. That's all I'll say. You go to Mount Obsidian, you're going to die. You are going to die. Also, don't go to the number one nature reserve. You see, you know, right near where you start the game, you see this big rock face in the distance. You have to get there by sea, right? Um, yeah, don't... When you get your first flying pal, which you can get quite easily, you don't, um, don't go there. Don't go over there. That's all I'm saying. Just don't go over there. See, uh, I say level 11. I might be level level 14 or 15 saying that, thinking about it. It's been a couple of days since I've played Power World now. Don't remember exactly what level I was on before I started playing. But those are the three things that I like in a, in a survival game. Creative base building, ease of access of allowing me to build and do what I like, and the freedom to explore. I can understand why the weapons workbench is behind a level uh, a gap, a, a, a level cap. Fair enough. But why are the foundations? Why is the furniture? Why is, like, let me be creative. Oh, wait, you're not high enough level for that. Go grind, cunt. So yeah, I didn't really find Power to be too fun towards the end. It's uh, a lot of things came apparent to me and I didn't really like it. So there you go. Pokemon has its issues and so does Power World. They're not both perfect. So now we're going to move on to the, the the final couple of points that I have to to mention. I wanted to talk about Power World specifically because Everyone's making comparisons to it, to Pokemon at the moment. So I wanted to weigh in and give my two cents. I wanted to talk about Pokemon clones as a whole, any as well, as well as fan games, as well as Pokemon spin-off games. And this all comes to the point of who makes Pokemon games? Who makes the mainline games? It's Game Freak. And I personally think Game Freak is lazy. That's my point. Are Game Freak lazy? That's a question I want to point to you, pose to you as well. Because I am under a great belief that they are. They know 
they can basically slap together any old Pokemon game, ship it out, and it will sell 10 million, 10 million copies in the first week. I'm pretty sure that, I'm pretty sure that's the mindset now. And believe it or not, there's proof to support that. I can't remember the exact title of the YouTube video, but there's a YouTube video on there where a dude goes on this. Basically, it's, just, it's you know LinkedIn, the website. It's similar to LinkedIn, where you can go on there. It's just a Japanese version of LinkedIn, where you can go on there and talk about your like previous employers and how was it like to work there. And you look at some of those previous employers. Of employees, the previous employees of Game Freak. Most of the comments generally say that it's an incredibly lax atmosphere. They don't really care about doing much work because they know the attitude is in the works work off in the office is that no matter what they make, it's going to sell anyway, and so on and so forth. So. Are Game Freak lazy? I think they are. I think Game Freak don't want to make Pokemon games anymore, but they don't have a choice. They have tried making their own little spin-off games, and it just doesn't work. And they've just they've just failed miserably with it. Like if you this this go over some of Game Freak's um, like not Pokemon games. So there's Tembo, Tempo is it Tempo? Is it Tembo, Tempo, Tembo? Tembo. I was right. So they did Tembo, the badass elephant, which was received fairly well, but nice little 2D platformer kind of game. They did Giga Wrecker, some kind of other kind of game. Little Town Hero is the, like one of the more recent ones, but no one played Little Town Hero. And Little Town Hero is an interesting kind of concept, how they basically decided to make that game. But the point I'm trying to make is, generally speaking, a lot of Game Freak's, like, recent endeavors, you could say, that are not Pokemon, just don't do well. They just don't sell. At all. Right? The most recent non- Pokemon game they released was Pocket Card Jockey Ride On, where it's it's fucking horse racing. Now, don't get me wrong, it seems to be rated fairly highly, but you look at the, the, the look at that game, look at it graphically, look at a lot of the games Game Freak does that aren't Pokemon games, and you'll start to see that holy moly, no wonder Pokemon is in such a bad state that it's in. They are very much, very clearly, an indie game developer. I'm dead fucking serious. They are an indie game developer. Why is an indie game developer making what is basically a, a studio that's putting out what the kind of quality or the kind of things you'd see from an indie game studio, not from like a triple A game studio? I'm not obviously. I don't expect triple A games from fucking Pokemon. I hate the term triple A anyway. But it just leads me to believe that Game Freak are just... They, they, they are still stuck on making 3DS quality games. But they can't, so they, they, they try to... They try to meet... They try to meet the expectations, fail miserably, and then they just they give up. So are Game Freak lazy? I think they are. I think they've given up. I think they don't care anymore about Pokemon. They just don't, don't care. Now, how could you fix this? Game Freak going back to 2D, I think that could fix it. Why can't they? Octopath Traveler is a game that exists, and it's a game that I, uh, I've played a little bit of it. It's not my kind of jam, but graphically speaking, looks lovely. Why doesn't Game Freak make a Pokemon game like that looks like Octopath Traveler? Why doesn't Game Freak try making a 2D Pokemon game again to see what the to gauge what the reception would be? Give it a go. You never know. People might like it, and I think it's something that is well within your capabilities, Game Freak. Whereas what you're trying to do with like Scarlet and Violet, very clearly you're struggling. You are struggling immensely. You've had an easy ride all the way up until the 3DS. An easy ride. When even attempting to get better and improve upon yourself. And since when the Switch came out, people's expectations were, oh no, we got to do bigger and better Pokemon games now. 
better graphics. And they fumbled it massively. All because they probably decided to just stay on the 3DS and not expand and they... Like, imagine if Game Freak was like, we really need to uh, expand and start making some more, uh, some home console Pokemon games. Imagine if they did that with, starting with the Nintendo Wii, the kind of Pokemon games we would have now. Think about that for a second. If Game Freak actually decided, hell, we, we want to expand, get better, use a better engine, so on and so forth, to make bigger and better games. If they had that mindset back after the, after releasing, let's say, Black and White and Black and White version 2 on the, on the DS, but they wanted to do it for the Nintendo Wii, imagine that. Imagine that. Your first 3D Pokemon game from Game Freak would be on the Nintendo Wii. And yeah, it would probably have problems, but... It wouldn't be the only one. You'd also have Battle Revolution still there and other Pokemon games. You know, with that Pokemon Ranch game, Poke Park Wii or whatever it's called. But then when they released their next 3D Pokemon game, it not only would they have the experience to make X and Y good, which a lot of people didn't like X and Y because they felt it very bland and there wasn't much to do in the game and so on and so forth. Well, that would have been improved. We might even got Pokemon Z. And hell, then they would have done an even bigger game on the Wii U. Just think about that for a second. But then there's always the alternative as well. Letting another company take the reins. Letting Game Freak step down as being the developers of Pokemon and letting some other company that would do a better job take the reins. Because there's probably plenty of other developers out there that probably would do a better job at it, to be completely honest. So yeah, I think I've talked long enough. I don't really like these videos being any longer than an hour if I can help it. So I'm going to pose two questions to you, the viewer, which I'd love to hear a response from in the comment section. And these two questions are, are you happy with the current state of Pokemon? And if so, why? And the second question I'm gonna pose you is, if you're unhappy with the current state of Pokemon, yeah, are you unhappy with the current state of Pokemon? If so, why? So if you like Pokemon where it is at the moment, please let me know why. If you're unhappy like I am, please do the same and let me know why in the comment section. But, there's a lot of thoughts. I probably could have structured this video a little bit better, to be honest with you. A lot of my feelings and thoughts are kind of all over the place with Pokemon, because Pokemon does kind of make me a little bit angry at times. But I feel like I've at least explained part of my issue and my dis dissatisfaction with Pokemon of being a fan since the beginning. So please, please keep your comments constructive. I will just remove any comments that are just literally, you are stupid, Pokemon is great, your opinion's fucking retarded. Any kind of comment like that, I'm just going to remove it. I, I don't care. What, why would I leave your comment? What's the point of that? What's constructive about that? You're just saying I'm wrong. Why? Please tell me why I'm wrong. Because you're retarded. That's not a reason. That's lit that's, That is just you insulting me. That's not a reason. Like... Please, if you're going to leave a comment, please keep it constructive. Please keep it, you know, keep it. What's the word I'm looking for? Please keep it orderly, civil. That's the word. Keep, please keep it civil, right? Because I'm just going to remove any comments that are just going to be insults or just any other things that kind of like fit in that category. I hope you've enjoyed the video anyway, and I hope that you still understand that even with me saying what I'm saying, I'm still a fan of Pokemon at heart. And I just really want to do, want them to do better. That's what it is. You know, if Pokemon was a person in my life, I would mo try to motivate them to the best of my ability. So that I, so they can know the greatness that they could they could achieve if they really tried their best. I've been Bio, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.